And good morning, folks. It's your friendly neighborhood, Taronin. And we're going to be looking at the XF5U. Well, we've looked at it plenty. But uh, I haven't got quite all the upgrades I want on this yet. And I wanted to get the uh, Tinny Tim rockets. And I'm like 665 points away. And if I'm making, going to grind a little, might very well put this up, so we're recording. You are approaching the front line. And the first question is, where the heck do we go? Well, apparently we want to go for the mining map, which would be okay if I actually had any ordinance on this, but we don't. And all I can do is get shot up there. So, maybe we'll just race on through. Spend some of that lovely boost. Jink around a little bit to throw off uh, the anti-aircraft fire and go after something I actually can affect. And we'll simply boost away from the enemy on my tail, who only thought he could uh, hurt me. I actually took more damage from the Now that's what's known as a target-rich environment, folks. Well, you know, I think it's the slowest I've ever seen that aircraft. Yeah, it's flying a J-8M. And what that was, was essentially the uh, rocket plane imported, the planes were imported from uh, Germany. And I forget the actual designation of it. Turned out to be something of a debacle more dangerous to its uh, own aircraft, or its own pilots than it was to anybody else. It still takes some time for me to get used to the fact of the reach of these guns. Oh, the J-8M is one very fast aircraft, but it ignores a lot of things. <laughs> Uh, like it had like three or four minutes of powered flight, which might be fun, but doesn't really um, all right, gentlemen, I appreciate your good th thoughts about me, and I think I'll just boost on my way on out of here. It takes some patience to fly this aircraft to fly correctly, and you have to also accept the fact that you're not going to get um, seven kills very quickly like you can in a turn and burn. You just have to play it for what it is and nothing more. And you also have to accept the fact that you want to fire as far out as you can get it. But if somebody is stupid enough to get near you with a slower aircraft like this one, 
and then thinks he's going to fly away. That's just dumb. That was played dumb. Mind you, I'm near vertical and I'm still doing 200 and something miles an hour. So with propeller aircraft, going vertical is not at all dumb. take my kills however I can get them. You know, 13 seconds of boost. I'll be able to get up there and do something about this. I don't know, but I'm certainly going to try. She always goes to show if you don't pay attention, you can be just as dead as anybody else. This is a game that will actually, uh, these guns cool down incredibly rapidly and heat up incredibly rapidly. We you any the is and we've entered in game, the squall line has come up, and if you do not, if you die now, it's it. He's lost his engine, and we'll find out whether he's got a heal. He does, we're going to leave. And he can quickly get in behind me, which is what he wants to do, and I'm going to quickly use my boost to get the heck out of Dodge, which I also promptly do. And there is an RB-17, and what else we got here? I've seen this aircraft before. It is not something that you can leave alone because it moves fast enough to really get you in trouble. I was actually very pleased with that. That's a good game. Alright, seven targets killed, five assists, one sector captured. Take a look at the summary here. Good experience. And Noel did very well. Yeah, they, we played very well. LA-9 is a fun aircraft. And we shot down A-9, the F-84B. Um, which was fun. I like it. Upgrades. 
that's the last upgrade for this. We'll actually give that a try. I don't know the wisdom of putting uh, bombs on this thing at all. The TNT 10 rockets were huge uh, weapons and immensely destructive. And they were using those to start sinking ships uh, late in the war. They were very late war development, had good range, and carried a, quite a punch, which kind of also put the end uh, to dive bombers. Dive bombers are very heavy because they have to be stressed to uh, go into a 70 degree angle uh, dive with a bomb load, which is usually very heavy, especially towards the end of the war, drop the bomb loads, hit their, uh, and then pull out very sharply, uh, typically about 1,500 feet to uh, sometimes as low as 500 feet. They would drop their bombs and move away. Well, that takes a lot of reinforcement of the airframes. Your wings have to be extremely heavy to take that kind of punishment. How, how punishing? Well, uh, Avengers, which were torpedo bombers, were sometimes used in that role and would literally disintegrate. And that was not a badly built aircraft. So it gives you an idea of just how stressful the dive bombing was and how much it had to weight it, the role weighted it down. Well, if you could take your average fighter or you, and put a couple of these things on there, you really don't need it anymore. And as such, that was the death knell of the um, SBD, uh, SBD, SBC-2 was what it was called. Uh, SB-2C. Let me get that absolutely correctly. Helldiver. And its claim to fame was it was the aircraft that sank the Mushashi and the Yamato. Or had a hand in it anyway. They... Uh, Certainly put enough craters in the deck that uh, didn't get through the uh, the horizontal armor on the uh, battleship, but they left enough wreckage that you can, as any aircraft abilities, its ability to control the ship were very badly affected. Anything less heavy than uh, a full-blown battleship with uh, very heavy horizontal armor was, or as to combat one, uh, when the uh, Curtis uh, Helldiver showed up. Okay, so it was a very effective aircraft, but it was not a beloved aircraft. Well, and it was the last purpose built uh, that saw widespread uh, service in American history because of these rockets. So, for a historical standpoint, if nothing else, I am interested in this. Now, the next question that comes up to me, because this is an aircraft that, I, you know, when they start looking up upgrades and the Banshees next, um, you know, I'm going to be spending a huge amount of time on this aircraft. So putting upgrades on it doesn't, it's not like, you know, a Tier 5 or a Tier 6 where, you know, two, three days later, you got another aircraft and maybe you can reuse it and maybe you can't. Uh, but I don't have a lot of that. So my question, and you guys, I would encourage your vote. I have the engine tuning and the improved aircraft polish for obvious reasons. All right. I want the additional thrust to getting up to maximum speed and I want my maximum speed increased. Uh, improved flaps will... Um, help you when you decide you want to hit flaps and reduce speed uh, and it gives you plus three to maneuverability and turns which is frankly this thing is big as failing so that might be one way to go here's the other one reinforced airframe and you get now this thing has got a lot of hit points and I can get another 15% and you get a minus 10% to critical damage to engine, crew, wings, and tail. 
ball, which is very nice. So you guys, why don't you tell me what you think? And I'm going to base my decision, at least in part, obviously I've got to live with the thing, uh, which you think would be more effective. Would turning a little faster matter? Would having, you know, 15% more hit points and being a little more uh, resistant to damage matter? Let me know. I'm going to leave that one open for right now. In the meantime, I want to try these rockets. Now, my policy is I want to fully upgrade the aircraft, give it a try, and let's go ahead for round two. You also take a significant penalty for a speed penalty, so it's not going to be quite as quick. And so it also, I like the versatility of being able to carry a couple of very large uh, rockets or bombs. I don't like the fact that I have to get down on the deck where this thing isn't nearly as uh, effective. And the Tinny Tim rockets <clears throat> give me about 9,000 points of damage as opposed to 12,000 points of damage from a pair of 1,000 uh, pounders. So, that's attractive to me from that standpoint. So, that being said, we'll just, uh, we'll give this thing a try. Uh, hopefully it won't be an utter debacle. Sometimes you can get this thing absolutely loaded with jets and, you, you know, nothing like a pair of, or a quartet or a sextet of uh, tier nines to make you want to cry and run home to mommy. I had one of those games once and never uh, went to video, but essentially, as soon as I took off, the uh, got uh, a thousand feet from the uh, spawn point. There were four jets waiting for me. Boom, 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 boom. You know, three times, four times, you were out. I thought, yeah, that's a good way to kill a game. And why not? You're the slowest thing in the game. Attention. You are entering the zone controlled by the enemy. There is a reason everybody went to jets. All right. If I remember correctly, there's my mining base. And as soon as I get <clears throat> over this mountain here, I'm going to drop one of these bad boys in each one of the two big buildings. And I have now done my duty. Boy, that was made a mess, didn't it?
Unfortunately, being around these aircraft, uh, these mining bases, they don't really have high or low altitude guns. So if you're high, they are going to take advantage of it. So I am going to go low and slow. Yeah, said I didn't like it. That's why. And we've now done our job. Enough of that nonsense. I've got a long time to reload. And I need to see where the heck I'm at as opposed to where the enemy is. Ah, uh, there's uh, another SEAL clubbing aircraft. This thing is a favorite for SEAL clubbers. <laughs> Hate to say it, but that's... Uh, that's what it's good for. The airfield is ours. Utilize its advantage. Sorry, fellow pancake. Have to do my job. Now he's playing right. He turned around and immediately got out of my line of sight and dove. I am not going to follow him. I have no interest in diving. He isn't going to pay me. Now these aircraft come with 600 points of health. if you don't upgrade them. If you do upgrade them, they come with 650. That is like the dance of the elephants, isn't it? And here he comes for revenge. Oh, running away. Never mind. Despite all the turning and sputtering, um, I'm sure there's other jets and other pancakes around, so I can't assume. Here we go. The weirdest thing about these aircraft is the range on these guns. They're just so large. So you, a lot of times it just catches you by surprise when... Um, suddenly a target turns red and you're not expecting it. Okay, so he's wanting to get involved in a turn and burn. I want him to get the hell away from me. I'm going to turn on all my juice. I'm not really moving that fast. I would have thought we would really been screaming faster than that. Okay. Uh, getting into close range uh, fights is just not in your best interest. I'm sorry. It's exciting and all that, but that's not what this aircraft is. And watching your radar at the speeds that aircraft move here is imperative. And don't be afraid to let up on the button on these. You can quickly and very efficiently um, well, I wish they had a re uh, repair facility. I need one. I'm not losing a mining base because I let a bomber slip by me. 
Though you guys know I play a lot of ground attack aircraft and I feel nothing but I am youth. I'm going to have to do something I don't like to do. But I need a new aircraft. No repair facilities, 30 seconds left. I'm down to the last third of my health. Got to respawn. I didn't write the rules of the game, but I do have to observe them. Now, that's an aircraft I'd very, very much like to fly. And I guess that's why we do this sort of thing, right? All right, so. I think we have all the aircraft in the world coming in. So I guess other people had the same idea I did. Wow. Yes, if you think I don't see you, you're very wrong. These things are spitting out about 600 rounds a minute. Wow, that's surprising. I'm getting ready to outrun them. That's P 51H. They're getting exactly slow. save my aircraft fellow pilot there. Now why a bot has to have something that overpowered, I don't know. But he does. Just to raise the challenge of the game somewhat, huh? Sixty-two. Unfortunately, I spotted him. Oh, unfortunate for him. key to keep from overrunning the P-51H, which tells you how fast this aircraft is. It's a 484 mile an hour fighter. I'm proud of you, pilot. Head back home. You notice two rockets got me almost 7,000 points of damage to ground targets. We killed seven, assisted with two more. <clears throat> and most of everything I destroyed with the exception of a uh, one ground attack aircraft were uh, fighters, or jet fighters in a couple of cases. Um, I like the aspect that it gives me of being able to affect ground combat, but you'll notice that very quickly after I did my initial attack, I really didn't have much use for those rockets. Um, that being said, the mining base that I did so much damage to, there was nothing left but three uh, uh, targets, one of which was soft, if our memory serves correct. I'd have to go back to the video and review it. Was... Um, 
pretty spectacular, and so it made it very easy for the rest of the team to finish up the uh, the capture. And so that was very useful, and it contributed significantly because we held on to the mining base throughout the game. This is going to be a judgment call, uh, and it's more of a play style type of thing than it is, uh, you know, you're going to be horrible without it, you're going to be uh, horrible with it sort of thing. Um, my inclination is to stay with the clean configuration and use the speed to uh, help chase down aircraft and to keep jet aircraft in your sights a little longer. The... Uh, we uh, killed a J-8M, uh, in the previous uh, battle, we killed a, uh, an F-84 uh, twice, we killed a, in this, in the latest battle, and we killed the P, whatever it was, uh, with the weird wings, uh, two or three times which really contributes to the uh, win. You know, when they can't do what they're wanted to do, you really put a crimp in your enemy's play style. There it is, BVP-212.03. Don't really know much about that aircraft, but we've kill we killed it at least twice. We killed a couple of uh, XS5 views. I never touched that. We killed a couple of P51Hs. So, you know, this is one where I can honestly say I did a lot for the, uh, the battle. And my hat's off and a tip of the hat to Tyson uh, Motorsports. He did a very... Uh, very good job and helped me throughout the game and I helped him uh, and then throughout the you know these are I'm pretty sure all bots but very very decent game okay so with the upgrades now We're at 190 is the research price, and we've already cut into it by 11,000 or so. Well, yeah, a little more than that. But anyway, uh, 21,000, I guess. Uh, so that's what we're going to have to go through to get to. Uh, it's just going to be a grind. So there's going to be, you'll see more videos of me grinding uh, more than I would necessarily like, but it's the cards were dealt, right? And as I get new aircraft, of course, we'll uh, throw those in, too. I still have to work on the tornado, and so we'll be uh, uh, progressing towards that. Uh, some other aircraft I'm working on getting up is the uh, P-47N. On the H, we've made some progress here. You look at the upgrades there. Um... You know, we haven't quite hit the halfway mark, but we're getting there, which will get me to the Fury, which I am very much looking forward to the speed. Uh, the maneuverability, you know, you're looking 10 seconds, it's going to put you still on P-51 uh, territory. And the guns, I am not looking forward to. Okay, I just, yes, there were 50 used in, in guns, and but a lot of these, there's an FJ-1 through 4. <clears throat> and again, this gets to the paucity of aircraft, the FJ-1. Uh, Dash 4 was a totally different aircraft. And it was cannon armed. When you start looking at the F-86 Sabre, it's the A. But there's an E version out there with, uh, or an F. This is the F, I think. 
that carried the four uh, M39 cannons. It was, uh, talk about a nice aircraft. And so you start looking at that, you think, oh, yeah, yeah. They really wanted it out there, and uh, consequently the H came out with, and that was the armament from that point on. Uh, and the Navy went with the Mark 12, which was not an awful gun. It's just when you really got into hard dog fighting, it would tend to jam, and you'd have to recock it. But that's, you know, as such things go, that's a more of an irritant than a game stopper. So anyway, we're coming up on that. Uh, other aircraft that are they're working towards. I believe this is the line right up into, yeah, the MiG-9, uh, and then you go up to the MiG-15. And when you're looking at the 9, uh, we got some real distance to go, so you're going to see some LA-9 videos, uh, which is not horrible. It's an awfully fun aircraft. Uh, the IL-20. Now, these things are beasts when it comes to upgrading because they're you have all these things to get, and they're all expensive. And so you start looking at this one, I've still got another 6000 to go before I get the final engine upgrade, and I move on to the IL-40, and, uh, you know, it's 228 and it's very expensive. I don't know why the ground attack aircraft are so expensive, but they are. And so you invest in them, and you're like, you want, you almost want to cry when you look at the, uh, and then, of course, we have the beloved Yak-15. <laughs> um, I've just got a lot of work to do on it. I, you can tell I don't enjoy the aircraft as much as I should. And I'm sure that will change right now. It is just below uh, P-51. Um, I'm sorry. It's right in zero territory. A-7M territory. And turning. But the problem is with the guns. Okay. You're looking at 280 at tier 8. 280 at tier 8. Now the range is decent. But when you get to these, I'm hoping that will make a little bit of difference. And there you're looking at 340, you know, yeah, and maybe it comes up to P51 in, uh, in damage. But when you start going up here, and you start talking, uh, excuse me, 497, you know, there's a lot of aircraft out there, propeller aircraft out there, can give you a run for your money. So, I found it a very difficult aircraft to, to play so far. Uh, it just doesn't have that. Although you turn and burns, yeah, they are slow, but they have tremendous amounts of firepower that makes up for it. This isn't the case. This is the Hayabusa of Tier 8. And it, I find it very troublesome to play. Um, and that's probably more my play style, but I, you know, if I'm going to climb into something, I want something that can actually fight hard. Okay. Um, this is an aircraft that fairly screams to get, um, the lightweight airframe and the, uh, control surfaces and the aircraft polish. Um, because it is so twisty, so turny, uh, and... The guns on it are pretty darn decent. You know, you're talking 440. Yes, you can live with that. But anyway, that's the kind of the future we're going down on this one. Um, and some of the future plans, just keep you in, in check with uh, or in tune with what we're doing here. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Remember to like the video and subscribe. I desperately need subscribers. I thank you so much. You have a great day.